Peter Charles here of Hooked Fly Fly Fishing, and today we're going to tie an old traditional streamer pattern called the Black Nose Dace. It's uh, perhaps a tad more involved than some of the easier streamer patterns, but it's effective. Uh, it's known as a great fish ca catcher, and I've done really well with them in the past. So let's get started and see the material we're going to use. The hook I'm using today is actually a, a salmon single hook. And the reason why I'm using that hook is a up eye hook tends to ride level in slow flows where a down eye hook tends to sag. And I prefer the look of the up eye hook. So I'm using a salmon hook. But if all you have is a streamer hook, you can use that too. Our thread is a uni thread in black six aught. Our tail is red yarn. So if you got a granny who does ugly Christmas shit sweaters, you know where to get the red yarn from. We're using a, a medium silver tinsel for the rib. Our body is a mylar and a gold silver, size 12. And we're using three colors of bucktail here. We've got black, we've got white, and we've got an olive brown. Our eyes are a mylar stick-on eye. And to keep those stick-on eyes in place when we're tying, we're going to use some of uh, this Danville Extra Fine Monofilament. On this fly, we're going to use a hair stacker to uh, stack the bucktail to get the tips to line up. So if you never used a deer hair stacker before, here's how we do it. So this is a salmon hook, so it has a return, the front end. So uh, it's called a return eye or a loop eye. And we're going to cover that return with thread to begin with, so we kind of trap that return in place. Next, we're going to tie on our yarn. Now, I'm going to pull it up and keep it on top of the hook, winding back, keeping the uh, turns of thread close together. We want a nice, smooth, even body. And to do that, I need to keep this yarn on top of the hook and keep it well trapped. I'm going to bring it back to roughly the point of the hook. Now I'm going to take it just past the bend of the hook and trim it off there. Now we're going to tie in our rib and we're going to keep it underneath the hook. Just trap a tag in there, wind it on. Now we're going to put on our mylar and this is gold one side, silver the other. So we tie it gold side facing up so that when we begin to wind it flips over and turns to silver. Okay now we wind forward and if you see any red showing try to cover it up, try to fill those gaps. The smoother we can make this the uh, better our body will be. As you can see that's quite smooth so when we lay on a mylar, it's going to cover it nice and smoothly. Now we start with a mylar, put a wrap right at the back. Now, here's the thing. We want no black to show through, so we want touching turns. I'd rather have a bit of an overlap than show the black through. So take, it, take our time and just wrap this forward without showing any of the black. Pull it back over on top and lock it in. Now the purpose for locking it on top like that is it helps keep the mylar in place. And we're going to cover that with a wing so it won't show. So this is a good place to lock it in. A couple more wraps to make sure nothing comes undone. Okay, and now we uh, put in a half hitch and we start to wind our rib. So the first wrap is right at the back and then we start to come forward. We do the same thing as the mylar, bring it up the front. Lock it in place. And trim off.
few extra wraps just to hold everything. Now we're ready for a bucktail. I'm going to start with the white first, that represents the belly. Don't take a big chunk. I mean, this is three applications here, white, black, brown. So if you were to use big chunks, you end up with a grossly overdressed fly. So I'm just going to take a little bit off here. Now, the bottom of this is full of short bits, so I'm going to grab this by the tip and stroke those short bits out over my garbage can. Now here's where you, we use the deer hair stacker. We put it in the tips first, get rid of any strays, tap that, put it horizontal, grab the tips, pull it out. Now I pick a spot on my vise, roughly uh, double the length of the shank as to where I want this to go. There we go. And I'm going to trim this off. I, when I'm working with bucktail, I like to trim it before I tie it in rather than the other way around. It ends up less of a mess and it's neater. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pinch loop. I'm going to come down and I'm going to pull back up. And I'll do that again and again. And what that does is it keeps the bucktail on top. You make some minor adjustments at here at this point. Now we can wind it in tightly. Double check, make sure it's okay. Good. The next is the black. Don't overdo the black. We want a hint of black. It represents the lateral line of the fish, of the black nosed dace. And so you don't want a really, really heavy black presence here. Again, strip these short bits off over your garbage can. Okay, now we'll. Take your deer hair stacker, drop it in tips first. Hold it level. Grab the tips, pull them out. Now we're going to size them up. Pick our tying end point. Trim it off. Now what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to tie it in a little bit behind where I tied in the white. And there's a reason for this. Use again the same pinch loop. Pull up. And the reason why I did that is I want to get a little bit of a taper into the head. If I tie it right at the very beginning where I tied in the white, it's going to be blocky. This way you get a bit of a taper. So just double check it. You want to see a little bit of white on both sides. Move it if you have to. Okay, now we tie it in nice and tight. Double check it. And a little bit of a twist. There we go. Now we're going to work with the olive brown. Uh, you can do a slightly heavier clump here, but don't overdo it. Since it's the last one, if you've gone a little bit thin with these, you can be a little bit more uh, generous with the uh, olive brown. You also have some color choices here. Uh, I'm using a, a sort of a sort of a gray olive brown, um, but you can use straight brown, straight olive, whatever is required. Let's grab the tips. Now we line them up, choose our cutoff point, and again be a little bit back of where we started last time with the black. Again, same idea, it's a pinch loop, you pull up, and now you double check it. You see that's a little bit too far on that side. There we go, that looks good.
When we get to this stage, we want to put a few soft wraps at the back, which will help the uh, wing to set down. I don't want this thing flared out too much. You'll need a couple. Then bring it forward and whip finish. The next step is to put in our mylar eyes. We're going to use our bodkin for that. We pick them off the uh, sheet with the uh, bodkin. And now we take our Danville Extra Fine Mono. This is very delicate, breaks easy. Be careful with it. I break them all the time, even though I know better. Start it, get it wrapped on. And it's wrap back over the eyes. Then bring forward. Whip finish. Now we're going to put on some UV head cement and we're going to go very, very lightly with this. This stuff is really drippy. So take your time, work it in. Now when we uh, put in some head cement over the uh, mylar eyes, the mono that we use to trap them down with tends to disappear. So now we just bring in our UV torch. I like to start upside down, rotate it a bit to get that to flow around. Now that looks good right now, but if we were to touch it, it would still be tacky. If I was to put it out in bright sun, it will definitely harden up and be fine just that way. But if you want to take a shortcut, this is top coat. This is used by women when they coat their fingernails after they put UV glue and other fancy stuff on there. Uh, don't use regular nail polish. Use the top coat. This is designed to go over UV glue. So put just a gentle bit of that, just a light bit of this, not too much. There we go. And what that will do is it will seal that UV glue and it will remain bright, it will remain shiny, and it won't be tacky. Uh, the only thing I will say about using top coat is it's smelly. So after I've put this on, I don't immediately put it into my fly box once it's dry. Leave it out for 24 hours. It will fully harden and then you don't have to worry about the smell after that. And it is important. If your flies stink of this stuff, you won't catch fish. They do have a nose. So if they're chasing a streamer that stinks of top coat, guess what? They won't hit it. Found out the hard way. Okay, so top coat works. Makes a lovely job out of the head, but give it time to dry. On that, here you go. The black nose dace, traditional streamer pattern. Works extremely well. Catches lots of fish. Has for decades maybe even a century. I don't know how old this thing is, but it's been around for quite a while. So get out there, fish it, and enjoy. Cheers.